What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be finishing off this mock draft around four of four. So if you guys are new, what are you doing here? Watch the first three rounds. And of course, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, do videos like this all the time. And if you have a favorite team, I got those mocks coming out for you if I haven't already done it. And we're going to be having new ones coming out after this season ends because a lot of teams will have their positions solidified. And then that's going to be a fun one to update. And then we might even bring on some co-stars. So let's kick into this draft, starting off with pick 103. Uh, the Jags, we have gotten, if I'm not mistaken, I think we got Aiden Hutchinson, which this was made before the national championship. I still think that Aiden Hutchinson is the number one prospect. Everybody has a bad game here or there, and he still was able to get a pressure on a very high-end rep. So people want to say that Drake Jackson should still be up in the first round. Your logic is inconsistent. So um, also, I think we got Bernard Raymond. And then, if I'm not mistaken, let's check out what we did with the last round. We got Isaiah Likely as well. Uh, I probably just passed the interior offensive lineman that we took, but just want to check on Bernard Raymond. We did get him. Uh, but the next pick that we went after, which is surprising because I can't find it. I see it's offensive line here. So let's quickly check it out. Let's find it. We got Aiden Hutchinson here. Um, it's been a couple of days, obviously. I've been making a lot of videos for you guys ahead of time, just so we could all experience the holidays together and I can catch up on all the goodies. Then we got Isaiah Likely here. Oh, there he is, Jamari Sawyer. Jesus. Uh, Jamari Sawyer is doing a great job. You know, he, to me, he's still a third round left tackle. I don't think he should play guard. Uh, even if you're able to handle a high end player like uh, Aiden Hutchinson, there's a lot of technicality issues that I was not a huge fan of, including his anchor. So he's doing a much better job, and I'm very proud of him for that. He might move into my mid-third range, but uh, I mean, maybe even early third, just because he did it against a very good talent. I'm still not completely sold on Jamari Sawyer yet. 103, though, this is a good spot to look at safety. Let's see who's on the board. Uh, Vro McKinley, I'm projecting him to return. I'm not 100% sure if he said he was or not. Tyke already did. No idea why he's still in here. Like, it's not like he declared that he's coming back in the middle of this mock draft. He did it a while before. Um, tier defensive line wise, you still got Tyler Davis here, but I think that he he would be playing a similar role. You, you could use him at nose tackle. It wouldn't be a very bad idea. You go wide receiver as well. Xavier Hutchinson, Alec Pierce, both solid weapons. Not a huge fan of Calvin Austin here. Unfortunately, one of my favorite receivers in this draft. Randomly decided to return as a senior, Cedric Tillman. That hurt me inside a lot. So that's a big oof. But we're actually going to go on the defensive line here. I think getting extra help with Tyler Davis being a junior is probably the best thing to do. You might as well beef up that interior. It's probably the best option for you. 104 for the Browns. I want to see who's still out here. You still got Brenton Cox in here, and he might just be too good to pass on. Uh, you don't. Know, I've been throwing a little bit of shade his way, but he is still pretty damn, he's pretty damn talented, guys. So he's definitely worth a pick around the spot. I would just be a little bit weary of him on the Browns. I don't know how he'd fit there, but they do actually run four guys on the, on down. So, I mean, let's do it. Brenton Cox, this is, draft is all about getting the right value for your team. And this is a team that has two of its edge rushers up for a contract. So getting Britton Cox on a new con or being able to get Britton Cox instead of going on a new contract with Tack McKinley might be the best option for the team for one Oh five for the Panthers. Uh, yeah. Tackle is probably in order here, but I'm highly doubting that the right one is here. I think the developing Brady Christensen might be your best option. And for that, I'm actually, Oh, thank God. The sun went away for a second. Uh, thank God. Jared Patterson is still on the board. I think using him as a guard or center might be the best option. His IQ is pretty high. Uh, he is my number two center right now after looking at him in depth. But Andrew Voorhees is worth a second round pick to me. And guard play has not been too bueno. So we're going to go Andrew Voorhees out of USC. I forgot he was still on the board. Uh, yeah, I, I did a deep dive on him after I started this, uh, this mock draft. And that guy's pretty damn good. 106 for the Seahawks. I think at this point, you got to go corner, right? Like Marcus Jones, Alante Taylor, he's a little bit slow, though. Um, you got Caleb Evans here as well. I'm going to go Marcus Jones. This guy actually has a lot of potential. You know, you have Sidney Jones there, right? But 
I think Marcus Jones has played the majority of his snaps outside. He is 5'8", but he is a damn talented corner. And he popped off on tape when I saw him. I'm like, oh, who's that corner? It's Marcus Jones. So big plus to Marcus Jones right there. 107 for the Baltimore Ravens. This could be a center, and this is going to be Jarrett Patterson. I have him way above Donovan West. So I think Jarrett Patterson solidified himself as the best offensive lineman on his offensive line. And that's a big plus to me because sometimes when you're a center, other players make you look worse. And I think that's what's happened. He on his own did a very good job. 108 for the Seahawks. This very well might be Haskell Garrett here. I think that his pass rush upside is worth it on this team. Now we could go after offensive line again. I'm just not a fan of many of these guys. I don't think they add much to this roster right now. So for that, uh, yeah, Rasheed Walker, I don't, I don't even know why people like Rasheed Walker. Andrew Stuber is going to be a right tackle. I think left tackle is the biggest need, and I'm not a huge fan of Andrew Stuber. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's go on the defensive line here. You can get – I'm projecting Nolan Smith to go back, and then ZTF already declared. Actually, Zach Harrison's here. His athletic upside is going to get him drafted, and this is probably right about where I have him. So, Zach Harrison out of the Ohio State University going here. Jets. You know, Jets could get another wide receiver here. Xavier Hutchinson would be a fun guy to have on the outside. You could have Romeo Dubs as a deep threat. That wouldn't be a terrible option either. You could go after another offensive lineman, but I don't think that's very realistic. Tight end is still a big need. And you have Greg Dolchich here, who I think is a phenomenal tight end. And I think that is the best option for y'all. At 110, New York has not gotten a running back yet. And you got James Cook on the board, who's a great, great, great back. I have him as a second rounder, okay? Like, he's a beast. Uh, of course, that's not an official second rounder yet. We'll, we'll see when everything is able to uh, kind of sift its way through. Uh, Zamir White could be an interesting one here. Jerome Ford is certainly someone who I'd have on the list. But you know what? Even though they don't usually need a running back like this, we'll go Kyron Williams. He's more of a three-down back than James Cook is. I think he fits a little bit more with what New York's looking for. Very similar to Devontae Booker. And, well, funnily enough, they have Devontae Booker. So, Kyron Williams out of Notre Dame falls no longer. Number 111. I think this would be a good spot to look at offensive line. I do. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Donovan West, but this is a good spot for him. Cade Mays played right tackle, but that's the one position you don't really need, you know. So, I'm going to go Donovan West here out of ASU. Another pretty solid interior offensive lineman can play guard can play center uh so if chase rie gets injured it's a great spot to put him 112 with the saints uh this could be a good spot to go after a quarterback like brock purdy you know there's somebody on uh twitter he has him actually this is number three quarterback so of course everybody like even book with some people's top three quarterback i'm not going to say that that's a factual statement but brock purdy could certainly be in this range. And funnily enough, this is a team that took Ian book, right. And he looked bad. I would take Brock Purdy any day of the week over him. And I think he he's my next quarterback that I have. So I might pull the trigger right there. Might piss off some fans of Nola, but eh. uh, I think this actually will be a good spot to get Xavier though. He's a very large wide receiver. You already have not mistaken. We went Jameson Williams in the first round anyways. So look at that. Yeah. We got Jameson Williams. We got a deep threat already who's actually a lot better than just a deep threat now. Xavier Hutchinson, getting a second wide receiver would be probably a very, very good option. For the Browns, honestly, this might be a good spot to trade out. They could get a tight end here as well. Kate Auten, uh, Sam Laporta, though. Oh, I like this kid. I really do. I'm not 100% sure if he's coming out. He is a true junior, but I think he might have said he was coming out. So that might be even better. I, I love Sam Laporta. When I watch him play, this guy pops off on tape. This guy's going to be coming in as that third tight end next to David and Joku. Sam Laporta is worth it. 112 for the Falcons. So I think this could be a wide receiver as well. You got Romeo Dubs here, who could be a really good deep throw on this team. Again, you're not going to be getting a number one wide receiver at this point. That's the bad thing. You could get Khalil Shakir. I just don't know how much of an upgrade that is over Russell Gage, right? Romeo Dubs has that potential to be your deep threat. Uh, he has good ball tracking. Solid enough speed, good size. I think that's the right move. You know, getting some extra wide receiver help on this team is paramount. And that's something that we need to address. 115 with the Packers. Let's see who's here in the linebacking room. 
You know, Demoko Quay Walker actually is pretty good. And Channy Tindall, like this dude, literally, I'm pretty sure he wears, uh, I might have gotten mixed up. He wears the neck brace, and that's just, it looks so sick seeing a linebacker do that. It might have been Quay. No, Quay's, Quay's the guy who, he's like number seven on the team. Regardless, uh, I was just trying to remember which one's which. But this could be a good spot to go after a high end linebacker. I think it's also a good spot to go after a tight end. So when you look at the guys on the board, Grant Calcaterra deserves a little bit more respect with Peyton Hendershot here as well. I think I'm going to trade back at the spot because I am going to go a tight end, but I just don't think any of them are worth it. There are some very good tight ends. And I think there's a very solid receiving back on the board. And I'm trying to find a team that needs a receiving back because this guy is worth every penny, right? Like this guy is amazing. And I want to see what the Patriots have done in this draft because I would take him if I were the Patriots. So they got Jack Campbell right there. Um, and you guys, I guess, get to see back and uh, be able to review what's been going on so far. Don't know where their second round pick went. Oh, John Mechie. There you go. So they have not addressed running back yet. So we're going to be moving up with Green Bay, which is weird because the Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady thing for a long, a long time. Aaron Rodgers is going to, well, he's not even going to be there anymore. Hope to God. I hope to God. Um, the Packers are going to be trading back. With the Patriots, they are not going to be losing their sixth round pick this year. They're going to be trading a fifth next year. Does it make sense? No. But at the same time, uh, you also want to make sure that you have enough youth on your roster. And without that, not too bueno. So this is going to be James Cook here. He is an amazing running back. They've taken Georgia running backs very highly before. And the fall stops now. Number 116 with the Jets. This could be a guy like Britton Brown. You can go Zeus White here. You can go wide receiver with Khalil Shakir. He'd be a pretty fun guy to add to the roster. Don't know how much he adds compared to, and it might just be oversaturation at a more of a slot type of position. But we could also look at offensive line. Not a fan of anybody there. So with this, I think this honestly might be a good spot to trade back to. I might actually go for some extra defensive line depth. Yeah, Haskell Garrett's on the board. I'm going to do it. He's my next uh, interior defensive lineman. And, I mean, his pass rushing upside is definitely worth taking in the fourth. So take him and be able to kick back and relax. 117 with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, if Nolan Smith were on the board, actually, I would take him. I would. Amari Barno is an interesting guy. I have him as a late fifth. Just not very excited about him at all. Not a big fan of what's going on right here in the edge class and unfortunately even though these guys are pretty good there is a big talent drop off after the first two days it's a very noticeable one so we could look at the offensive line get somebody to be able to step in and honestly at this point in the draft getting a guy like Rashid Walker wouldn't be a terrible idea guy has a lot of upside and if this is a team that should be addressing their issues in free agency this guy's probably not gonna be much of a downgrade if he starts either and that's not a good sign but hey He's a good player. Uh, just there's a lot of technicality flaws with him. And there's a lot of big red flags in the fourth round. You also see where the upside is. And that's why you take a guy like Rashid, who has a lot of potential. Pray to God. I'm pretty sure Zion Nelson said he's returning. He should. At 118 with the Chargers. I want to see which interior offensive line we got. I think we got a guy who actually I haven't put his left tackle more than interior offensive line. Kenyon Green. Yeah, I think he's worth a second round pick, like an early to mid two as a guard. I think he, he's phenomenal as a left tackle. So I hope he can do the same at right because that's what I'm going to have him on this team do, which means right guard is still a need. Fortunately, not a big fan of the rest of the right guards on the board at the moment. Tight end is something I do want to address, okay? Like being able to get a tight end here versus paying another one probably is the right move. You could go after somebody like Tyler Beatty, Hassan Haskins, and Jerome Ford as another depth running back. But I think cornerback room is the right way to go. And honestly, Alante Taylor would work really well in this scheme. You do have guys over the top. If you're going to say that Trent McDuffie will work in this scheme, but Alante Taylor won't because of his athleticism, the logic, again, does not add up. 119 for the Raiders. Yeah, this is going to be a good spot to... I mean, you could look at, again, Rashid Walker would have been great here, but Stuber fits perfectly what they're looking for. 338 pounds, big-ass dude, right tackle. Leatherwood right now should be continuing to develop at guard. It's a fourth-round pick. Take Stuber and see what happens. 
Not my guy who I would take here, but again, it makes sense with what the Raiders would do. Also, he has a grade out pretty well per PFF. 120, we got the Ravens. And this, I mean, the Ravens don't need Jack, right? Like they, they don't really need anything. Uh, Charlie Kohler is a good tight end here at Iowa State. I think for a fourth round pick, certainly worth it. See how he's able to develop. Kind of just stole him from the Packers though. 121, we got the, the Dolphins again. Welcome back. I think ooh, this is a tough one, actually, because I think maybe even getting the best player available like Damone Clark might be the best move. And honestly, that's what I'm going to do. I've heard a lot about JoJo Doman as well, but we're going to get Damone Clark here. I know we've already addressed the linebacker position, but again, you do possibly need more than that, and it is the best player on the board. Wow. The Raiders are back again, and this is actually going to be Quay Walker here out of Georgia. He's the right size for a linebacker. Um, he has some good athletic traits. He can cover as well. I think it's a good spot to take him. Niners, 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 Niners. Uh, I would be looking at the corner or safety here again. I know that you guys do need multiple. So unfortunately, not a huge fan of that safety group right there. And if, if Marcus Jones were on the board, I'd be taking him in a heartbeat because I know that slot corner would be a good idea. Noah Daniels is returning. So honestly, Honestly, I'm really liking it. Do we still have Riley Moss on the board? Probably don't. I would have definitely taken him by this point. Yeah, it seems like it. It, it appears as if I have taken Riley Moss, and I have, because that would be a really good fit on this team. I'm also going to go with Caleb Evans out of Missouri. He's six foot two, 200 pounds, the perfect guy to keep on the boundary. I think it's the right move for this team that is kind of, you kind of need to get some extra help in that corner core. You already got one corner who's solid. I think getting a second one, like a Caleb Evans with those, immeasurables or intangible no those are measurables what are those measurables the thing that you cannot train i think that that is a good place to start for the colts i think this is honestly a good spot to also go corner you got chamari connor here mario goodrich i'm not that big of a fan of but you do see he's not that old he's going to be about 22 at the draft and it's pretty good depth to be honest with you guys uh, Joey Porter Jr., again, I'm not 100% sure if he has decided to return or not, but he has some skin-tight coverage, man. He's going to be going this round, and I'm assuming he's not returning. Just, again, I think that these corners are going to be like, oh, I could be a day, like a mid-day three pick or early day three. Joey Porter Jr. is based on, again, those things that you can't train. It's length. It's really damn good. So at this spot, this is going to be Kate Otten here out of Washington. Not that big of a fan of him. Again, Josh Wiley is going to be returning. It, I'm pretty sure he's declared that. As well as Jaleel Billingsley. They all should be returning at least. He's my next tight end on my list. Kate Otten out of Washington. He's a solid uh, He's a solid tight end. And if he does not drop the ball, I think he could be pretty good. <laughs> like It's a weird thing to say, but uh, next guy's going to be Alec Pierce. Yeah, I think this is a pretty solid selection. I feel like he is a Raven. Just a guy who's going to be great in the contested catch. I can really see him in a Ravens uni and getting more guys who are big and can do some great contested catches with quarterbacks that are not very accurate. is probably the best thing that you could do for Lamar. So it fits kind of perfectly. I'm pretty happy with it. So we're going to be rocking with it. 127 with the Bengals. Welcome back, Bengals fans. Uh, looking at offensive line here, you could also go after Cade Mays. We got, I think we got Trevor Penning. So... Uh, Cade Mays wouldn't be terrible at this point. He actually didn't grade too terribly for me. Very, he's a very high floor offensive lineman. I think adding extra depth wouldn't be a bad idea. Cade Mays out of Tennessee, former Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, Georgia Bulldog going in. I saw Oklahoma right here. Jesus, Tyrese. Uh, 128 for the Bills. Getting some, you guys have pointed out, getting defensive line might be the best move here, right? So looking at the guys available, you got Keanu Benton here, Colby Wooden. Um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Robert Cooper. That's just me. I, I do really like Robert Cooper and Corey Durden, both solid interior defensive linemen. I'm not going to go that route, though. We do set, still need a second corner, and I think we're going to go to Clemson for it. I think Mario Goodrich at this point, he's young enough to mold into a corner, too. And that video that I just made, if Bills fans, I just made your seven-round mock. It just dropped as of right now. It's actually dropping later tonight, but it's dropped yesterday for y'all. So go check that out. 129 for the Texans. So at this point, 
I think wide receiver might be the best move. And you got Khalil Shakir on the board. I don't think you can pass it up. So Khalil Shakir out of Boise State, definitely worth the pick. Leaving the Buccaneers to steal Justin Ross at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't know if he's actually ever going to play at that level that he could, but this is a team that definitely is able to take a shot on it. 131 with the Titans. Honestly, linebacker or uh, corner are my moves right here. And I know you guys have a couple of dudes like David Long um, moving up and being able to perform pretty well. So we're not going to go after another one. You could go seven banks here. I don't think that'd be a terrible option. Uh, Storm Duck as well. Stephen Gilmore. You know, honestly, I think that might get some hype. And he's going to go here. Stephen Gilmore out of Marshall. So, yeah, I think that his last name is going to definitely get him some notoriety. And that is going to push him into this territory. Cowboys. Honestly, linebacker could be something we definitely go after. If you do think that Mike is going to be doing more of an edge role. So, given that, uh, Terrell Bernard, if I'm not mistaken, he was the guy who uh, had, he's had like 15 sacks this year. Don't think you go after a similar profile. Channing Tindall looks like a mean fighting linebacker. And that's somebody who I actually quite like. And he's also, and I think uh, Mel Kuyper's top 10 linebackers, good spot for him. 133 with the chiefs. Honestly, if it were me, I'd be looking at running back like Jerome Ford here. And you know what? Come at me. I'm going to do it. I don't like CEH. I don't think it will be ever worth a second contract. And I think that you need some actual contributors on the offense. Jerome Ford, certainly worth it. 134 with the Packers. Uh, this could be, uh, no, I don't think they'll go after Eric Gray here. I was like, this could be a team that goes after someone like that. But at this point, I mean, you're looking at some wide receivers here. I think Dontario Drummond's earned his keep. He's even helping out rookie quarterback or like true freshman quarterbacks in the bowl game. So rest in peace, Matt Corral. But luckily the, um, the, what is it called? <laughs> I can't even believe it. I just forgot. The scans came back negative. Yeah. His, um, his x-rays came back negative. So very glad to hear that there's nothing torn or broken. It's just going to be a really bad sprain. At this point, this is going to be Brock Purdy out of Iowa State. They need something there to compete. And we all know that Ian Book is complete cheeks. 136 with the Packers. Back again? Jeez, they, they got a lot of picks, huh? So I think a linebacker would be the best value at this point. You got Jojo Doman here. You got Terrell Bernard. I, I think Terrell Bernard's earned his keep after his play yesterday. So cheers to him. 137 with the Ravens. Again, what's up with these? What's up with all the Ravens, man? The Ravens and the Packers, be they're coming back. And the same thing with the Chiefs. Uh, not Chiefs. I can't even believe. I said I saw the Chiefs. I said Chiefs, the Saints. This could be Jojo Doman. This could be. I think that if you want to get someone who's a day one impact, you go after a guy like Jojo Doman. Brian Asamoa seems a little, well, they didn't, mm, we'll go Brian Asamoa here. We'll do it. Uh, going after a linebacker. I was like, they passed on, what's his name? He's actually a bust at the moment for the Chargers. He's actually one of my favorite guys in that draft. I'm bugging on the name right now. It is early in the morning. It's also cold as hell outside. So that's why I'm repping the, the robe, but you do you boo but at this point honestly this is just a good spot to get someone like eric gray solid receiving back it is the best player available and i love him i'm a huge fan of eric gray here so cheers um i'm gonna be doing i'm doing all my deep dives right now i got most if not all the offensive line in this draft scouted so whew. yeah you guys don't realize how long that takes i didn't realize it either it's it's a lot of work 139 with the rams though Oof, this could be a team that could use an edge or no, no, I said edge and chose corner. It is really early in the morning. Uh, you could actually go after a THT. I don't think that's a bad option. He's a pretty solid slot corner. And a team like the Niners honestly could have used him. In retrospect, I kind of forgot about THT on the board. 140 with the Bengals. This is a team that could also use another edge. You got Isaiah Thomas here. I'm not a huge fan of him. I have him as UDFA. Uh, you got Kate Hall here, who I think is pretty talented. I'm actually going to go after Xavier Thomas. And Ty Tyreek Smith, you know what? Tyreek Smith deserves some more respect. This guy gets, oh, I actually really like Zach. He actually could have been a, he could have been a uh, Bengal, but Tyreek Smith is a stud too. He's getting very little hype. Zach Van Valkenburg is really good. I don't know what's up with the hate on this guy. I actually put him down in my watch list. And you know what? Screw, screw TDN. We're taking him here. Ending off the draft with a guy who I'm a pretty big fan of. So that's going to be the draft, guys.
it's been a one hell of a journey. And after learning about all of these players, we're going to have definitely an interesting uh, week next week. So let me know what you guys think. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.